so good morning and uh, welcome to this uh, special session uh, powered by my affairs media and it's an honor to have uh, all gurus from educational institutes today and uh, i would this call this a special session a rather a super class today and uh, you know we are all gurus we have tried to invite from various educational institutes uh, and uh, so as from industry also so as to you know impart some special uh, you know knowledge the activities and the updates from the industry which is fruitful for the travel uh, students who are pursuing the education or who are planning to go into that direction so allow me to introduce today's special guest starting with professor s c bagri professor uh, dr manjula choudhury professor and dr mr sajnani Uh, so all respected gurus from renowned institutes very active and i'm sure that uh, 70% plus population in the travel industry must have attended one of their lectures through any of the platforms in the past so it's an honor to have them here and uh, gurus from industry industry leader ankush nijawan md nijawan group co-founder tbo group so tbo has a presence in 100 plus countries with 26 plus uh, global offices and i think only company from india to who is part of wttc right now ankush is also an angel investor in 12 startups few awards which i would like to mention which he has uh, been awarded with young turk by cnbc for b2b travel most influential person 40 under 40 by urs asia and pwc and et game changer so it's an honor to have ankush from the industry perspective so he can share some you know food for thought uh, for the uh, young blood who is uh, planning to enter this industry and last but not the least my latest addition to my facebook friend list and also a business friend list is vimal k rai md trace consulting hong kong welcome vimal all right so today's session is planned a bit off the road a lot has been discussed on various platforms so uh, straight away jumping into the topic i would like to have few words from uh, dr manjula choudhury to start with uh, as an opening remarks on the current situation and the way forward so doing over to you dr manjula thank you sachin thanks for bringing me on this platform though you have raised some very valid questions i was sharing it with my colleague they said i mean these are all important questions that your student has raised and most of the students my students are really worried in fact tourism industry is seeing the maximum blood shed because of the travel is all about mobility and mobility is one thing that has been curtailed because of covid 19 so everyone is so scared like classes are not being held and then exams are still they they are deferred they don't know when the degree will be given and if the degree is given they are not sure like whether they will be able to join the industry or not so so i have often advised them that, that, that this is not the first and last epidemic there are so many more that humanity will see but uh, as as a human race we have been uh, bold enough and we have been intelligent enough to overcome all the problems so basically what i feel is uh, for tourism industry in particular it is advantage indonesia and thailand and malaysia they have been like closing certain areas and beaches in order to do the revival so this is a natural process of revival that has taken place but the only thing is shall can can we or shall we be able to sustain this advantage that have that we have obtained as a result of lockdown uh, a survey was conducted in us where uh, people said that they will revert to travel within 3 months i do not know whether such survey is going on in india or not but if they revert to travel in the 3 months in the same fashion as they have been doing in the past and which is most likely expected because uh, change may be expected but uh, there there is an herd tendency also so people don't respect they, they, the human memory is also very short they tend to forget so the important thing here, here is for for the indian uh, tourism industry in in general like if uh, we we academicians and then the government and industry they can work forward with a common agenda like what should be the shape of things to come it should not uh, it should not be allowed to emerge naturally 
there has to be a concerted effort there has to be a strategic plan that this is going to happen this is not going to happen i am sure this may sound a little far fetched but this is doable this is achievable because there are many operators who will look for immediate profit making in the market and they may revert back to their old style or old ways of doing things here the the role of government becomes very very important so we have to chalk a chalk out a road map we do not know when it is going to open whether it will be one month two month three month there is so much of uncertainty but whenever it opens there has to be a strategic plan like what we can do in say stage 1 then stage 2 and stage 3 and at the same times so we have to allay the fears of our students we have to address them also i have been telling my students they keep on doing as many online courses as possible that you feel are relevant the, the, today is the best time so much of online material is available for the purpose of study and for the purpose of getting certification keep doing it so the so by the time you go into the market no one tells you like what you have done in the past 6 months when classes were off so with the upgraded skills and the view the new skill set and and with the enthusiasm and if they whenever they enter into the industry they have to just wait and watch like everybody is waiting and watching but i hope that good things are likely to come and they will certainly come but we must have a plan in place because balance is the key so balanced approach is very very important thank okay. you thank you dr manjula um, so balance is the key and moreover i was hearing and uh, news a uh, few days back there was a you know very line which was going viral as people love to travel and business people has to travel so some some positive vibes are also coming in so now moving on to dr sajnani dr sajnani you have been conducting lot of uh, webinars and also attending few of them so what is the crux as an opening remarks for all of us to take it uh, from here sachin i have structured my uh, points you know and uh, probably uh, you know this is the very right platform for the students because this question as manjula ma'am said is in the mind of every student and i must say that it is not only the worry for the student it should be worry for every teacher also as a teacher i should be equally worried that how i am going to do justice with my job so to do justice and to convey through your platform to all the students who are sitting and you know attending this webinar or this session so they should be clear where lies the silver lining for them because true this is a hard time so the very statement that is there a silver lining for tourism students uh, the very statement in itself has very positive connotations so i would not like to refer to the reports which are being published by wttc unwto and other organizations about the losses about losses of jobs revenue loss and you know uh, how we are going to face difficult times in coming future rather i would like to address two questions through this small deliberation how can we handle this situation and how we can take the charge to revive how we can revive because these uh, pandemics have occurred in the past also naturally and mad made but then how we have come back so quickly and we have revived so easily stronger even so that's important question and what will be the role of different stakeholders manjula ma'am rightly said balanced approach is required but for that the role of government is very important as we all know that covid 19 is a time tickling bomb it is not spreading uh, you know in a uniform manner across the world it is taking a uh, tickling at one place at one time and other time at other place so as a student it is important for me to you know understand and to identify those places which are least or minimum affected because of covid or which are the places which have come out of this pandemic a name of you like switzerland like norway like finland like poland like uh, uh, bolivia like czechia czechoslovakia so these are the some of the countries you know which can be tapped for immediate uh, action by our government to launch uh, incredible india campaign so that you know we can revive our inbound as soon as possible but yes uh, you know as everybody is feeling and everybody is saying that uh, international tourism is a dream as of now i mean we just can't think of it so we need to have domestic tourism first internally the dynamics of domestic tourism need to get you know uh, upgraded and every student today you know from any institute for that matter sachin you will agree that you know they want to work for international uh, products either they want to work in inbound operations inbound mice they want to work for outbound outbound operation 
outbound miles outbound product development so they want to experience the taste of international tourism but this is not the time i mean manjula madam rightly said it is going to take some time you know i was reading today uh, sicily in southern italy today's news you know they have come out with a 30 million euro package and they said that sicily will bear half of the cost of your air travel they'll pay for half of your hotel bills all monument i mean sicily you know is the largest island in mediterranean and known for historical uh, you know uh, products so they said all entry for all monument will be free imagine you know uh, manjula madam said that us has done a survey 3 months they are going to come back it least says we want to sicily wants to come back in next two months so you know it, it is the human tendency that we want to see we want to learn new things we want to see new places and to all this we need to travel we need to travel and if we need to travel there's urge to travel travel is going to come back but the lining for uh, silver lining for the student as manjula madam said as you also said in the in the pre meeting uh, room you know that uh, students are learning new things i'll share with you at amity you know we started online classes from 15th of march and so no syllabus no academic loss happens even the all uh, academic assessments are done online all uh, uh, nt are non teaching cadet courses viva is being done online and you know uh, what summer internship we are giving to our students is online so students have started learning how to design a questionnaire on uh, on google doc or or, or on a uh, quantrix for that matter so and now you know because a uh, student will have to develop i mean it is not the question what i know as a teacher it is the question what industry needs from them so we have to review we have to revise our curriculum uh, with inputs which are uh, which will be needed by the industry because industry is going to is not going to be the same you know there will be a new normal a uh, business practice in the coming days so it is for us to as a teacher to assess what are going to be the required or the new business dynamics so we have to train our students accordingly so you know this competition or this competitive uh, advantage because you will agree uh, everybody will agree because that the best part of the world today is undergoing recession so many people will lose jobs they are also but when they are losing jobs and if they are they are told i am told that there are some countries like germany like uk us they are asking people to leave and go back to the respective countries there was a report and if it is so then these people will come back so our student will have to compete with uh, this generation which has worked and which has the work experience in the developed countries so how will our students compete with them we have to train them on all new business models and this new business model is all driven by technology today we are sitting on on a, on a zoom meeting and tomorrow i'll maybe sitting on a webex you know i am i am, my students should know how to work on augmented reality they should know how to work on virtual reality they should know how to use artificial intelligence because another until i give my uh, my customer a immersive experience by using you know virtual reality or if i am not able to use my data i know i might not able to analyze it for conclusions to draw conclusions you know i am my business model uh, will not be a fit uh, for the day and if i am not fit for the day i cannot survive if i cannot survive i am i am i am out of the business so for any student who who is going to join the industry in coming days will have to be the fittest and to be the fittest it is a challenge for institutions like us you know we have to upgrade ourselves we have to upgrade our, our uh, curriculum and we have to give upgrade skills to our students uh, i think uh, this is as an opening and rest we can take up the questions thank you okay. sure sure thank you thank you dr sajnani now uh, i'll move on to professor bagri for his uh, expert comments on the subject good morning to all of you uh, actually the, the problem is here how to place our students in the trade in the present scenario first this is the problem the student who are in the final year whether they are in tourism or hotel management how can we make their i mean journey to the trade easy and movable second problem is that where we can place them third problem is that when we can place them these three problems are very important as on date if you see there are 
hotel management institutes in the country. In the final year, if you think 60 students are in the final year, if you calculate it, it is around 48,000 students, around 50,000 students are in the final year of hotel management. Now come back to travel and tourism management. There are 60 universities in the country running this two year MBA or MTA. Yeah, MTA. If you calculate one on average 30 students, there are around 2000 students in the final year. After that, there are 500 colleges in the country running three year bachelor degree in tourism management. And if you count their strength on an average 30, so there are around 10,000 students. Overall, 62,000 students are in the market who are trying to get suitable placement in the trade. And they are, they belong from Kashmir, Kashmir to Kanyakumari, or from Gujarat to Asa, I mean, Arunachal Pradesh. Now, what could be our strategies? What to do for them? Listen, this is not a tourism season. This is a tourism season for only for Himalayas. Jambu Kashmir is free from coronavirus, except Bandipur. Himachal is free from coronavirus, almost. Uttarakhand is almost free. Sikkim is free. Northeast is free. I am suggesting to my students, they should go through online courses, but they should not give any break. They should not make any gap in continuing their training and skill development. In the month of November, if they go in the trade, obviously the owner will say, where were you during the last four months? What did you complete in the four months? He will say that I, I'm sleep I was sleeping. I was just waiting. No, this is not the answer. To be very frank, my students who have completed their travel training in the month of February or January for 45 days with a couple of travel companies daily, I, I shared with them, don't spoil your time, connect. They should connect with some travel and hotelier and to resort companies in this Himalayan part. Why? Because there are two types of tourism. One is the intra-regional and one is the inter-regional. In the inter-regional, a person can go to UP to Madhya Pradesh or Madhya Pradesh to Gujarat. But in intra-regional, a tourist is confined within the region. For example, I am from Uttarakhand. I received a call from a client from Gujarat that Mr. Bagdi, you are advisor of a couple of hotel properties in this case, Adwar. Can you ask them that can they accommodate them just after the month of May? I said to them, this is not a cup of my tea. It is the, I mean, the problem is in the hand of the government. They will decide when they are opening it. Second thing, there are two types of tourists. One is a hardcore tourist. Hardcore tourist, I'm repeating it. A second is a casual tourist. Casual tourists are going to Jaipur, Agra, so and so. Hardcore tourists are confined to Dwadas Jyotirling. Hardcore tourists are confined to 51 Shakti feet. Although out of these 51 Shakti feet, 15 Shakti feet are in Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, we are not concerned about that. But they will be there. They will be in Balaji temple. They will be in Kamekha temple. And if you remember, Cox and King's company, I'm just, I'm sorry, not mentioning it. They have pitched their tents around Brinda one for Assi Koski Yatra Me. They have their own tents, luxury, I'm accommodation they are providing. Obviously, Agra is not suitable, but some of the places in the Himalayas, some of the places in Sikkim are even having very good facilities, very good resorts, very good tour operators. And then definitely our students who are in the queue, they will ask, can they appoint them? Definitely they will say no, but they should voluntarily offer their services on just a stipend basis and they should pass their time there for four months so that they can get hand on skills they can continue they can keep themselves updated rather to confine in the pages of online literature 
otherwise things will be go beyond the their control similarly the hotel management students of you can say of kurukshetra or of dil amit or garhwal or any place if they got their training in south india so they can keep four months to keep themselves busy in some properties like in ladakh one of the students you will be surprised to listen two students from pondicherry university got their training in ladakh and ladakh is free from corona virus why some students do not opt to ladakh do not opt to other places so this is my my some i mean opening remarks that they can pave the way for the betterment of our students who are around 62000 otherwise their placement when they will be joining in the month of november would be little bit difficult thank you all right thank you thank you professor bagri for your valuable comments uh, now i'll move to ankush uh, for the industry perspective uh, just admitting you so over to you ankush ankush for your uh, comments on the thing i think this is one of the toughest times uh, which the industry is being facing and i don't think it is going to come back for many years to come but unfortunately i know some students are looking for placements uh, this year but as i say you know this is a passing phase it's not a here it's not going to stay here for for more than 6 months in my opinion travel is something which everybody is very hungry and i'm talking from normal commercial angle because i've been talking to <laughs> industry on a daily basis and getting their sense of sentiments on how the market is bouncing so i think so if i see the big picture india is going to be the third largest aviation slash travel economy in the world all of us know that 10.2% of the world gdp comes from travel and tourism so we are as a as a, as a sector or industry we contribute a lot to the uh, world as as well as the governments uh, one out of 10 person one out of 10 is employed in the tourism industry globally you know i think this is a blessing for india what has happened because i think india was always underplayed as a destination you know because more, everybody wanted to suddenly go abroad um so 30 million passengers versus 10 million inbound i think what prime minister said last year ki desh dekho i think is actually going to become a reality you know which is going to work in the india favor i think the tourism for the next 6 months is going to be very very domestic focus things which have never happened on the domestic tourism side will happen this year large operators such like us are going to focus on this market which we never did our focus was always outbound so that is something which is going to be there um i think incredible india will really need to work hard uh, both in india as well as overseas to position india as a very very safe destination i said i i, I would really like you know i blame media a lot of portraying wrong things about india which actually flashes all over the world what happened at nirbhaya for example is something which i think disturbs the it's not that i mean i know what happened is very very unfortunate but you know things like this happen across the world but they don't get published the way it got published across new york times be it the telegraph in london you know the mage suddenly happened as if india suddenly every date happens in india the reality is it doesn't i think india is a very peace loving uh, country that way i mean the rapes happen more overseas than what happened in india i think media will have to play a lot of um, important role destination which i have never heard being in the business for 20 years have suddenly now getting involved i think jobs and placements might have a challenge for 6 months but i can promise you it will be the biggest industry one of the fastest industry when it comes to employment probably in 2021 so i would really really you know request my student fellows here you know i was your side few years back uh, don't get demotivated this is a passing phase it's a matter of time when the vaccine is out and the winner the vaccine will out i promise people will be standing outside railways will be standing outside train outside aircraft to get on to the flight because this madness cannot stop we are a very young population as a country the young especially like to explore they like to adventure out unlike my father or my grandfather i think this is a great opportunity guys tell me which industry contributes more than 10% to the world gdp think about it you i mean you will have hand handful industries in when which you will be able to count which cont contribute such a significant uh, gdp to the economies so this is my humble request stay calm do great trainings there are great modules available to make sure that you learn more things what you have already more than what you have done at at your uh, universities or colleges but i think this is an industry which will rock um and i am equally worried but i think it's matter of 6 months definitely this year is challenging but 2021 i don't see anything is going to be stopping this industry to grow the way we are going imagine 700 aircrafts are to be parked where are they going to be parked in india they will be flying within india imagine the opportunity look at the 
structure. And I'm sure the government is going to really take this advantage to ensure that India becomes one of the finest destinations, both for inbound as well as um, uh, domestic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ankush, uh, for these words and giving us, uh, you know, the positive side of... Thing, something to interrupt me, the yep. industry, just one of my points which I'd written, 10 years back, the industry was not as forthcoming when it came to salaries, right? You were always compared to a TCS or some other software companies. I think in the last three years, the average salary is almost at par with very large industries. So this is a great opportunity that, you know, tourism industry today is a good paying industry, even as a start, as a fresher, and then obviously depends on how you perform and keep growing up the ladder in many organizations. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Ankush. And uh, now I'll move to Vimal. Uh, we did one session with Vimal, I think, uh, two weeks back, Vimal. And uh, this was purely on the positive side. I'm sorry I could not invite students in that. But yeah, uh, so we have invited Vimal again today. So over to you, Vimal, uh, for the positive vibes again. Thanks, Sachin. Thanks, thanks everyone. You know, it's really difficult to follow in the footsteps of the other four people who have spoken before me. You've covered pretty much the whole market. Um, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly, uh, as an as a introduction, um, I want to remind all students here, you know, we were all once where you are today. All, all of us, right? Regardless of our age, we have all been there. And over the years, we've learned many things. We've made money. We've lost money. We've made friends, lost friends. You know, all, all of that put together. At the end of the day, the one thing that the one positive thing, and forget media, I totally agree with Ankush that the media is probably responsible for 90% of the mentality, mental problems that we have today, right? Because they keep focusing on all the negative things. I mean, that's how they sell or that's how they do their job. But, you know, I just want to come back to this idea that the one thing that you should be doing today and tomorrow and forever more, regardless of whether it's good times or bad times, is looking after your mental health. How do you do that? Focus on the things that you can control. Don't focus on things you cannot control. So let the government do what it's going to do. Let the industry do what it's going to do. Let COVID-19 or COVID-20 or COVID-21 happen. Right? You cannot control all these things. The vaccine is going to come out in 12 to 18 months. Let it come out. Industry is going to be in the doldrums for three months. Let it be in the doldrums. Do not focus on those things. Focus on the things that you can control, which means what you need to focus on is yourself. What you need to focus on is how do you prepare yourself for when the industry comes back. So in other words, as some people have already mentioned, take the courses. If you are weak in something, two years ago, I was weak in digital marketing. I've learned and I've practiced. Today, I call myself an expert in digital marketing, right? Do the same for yourself. If you're weak in Excel, go and do something with Excel. If you want to learn about AI, machine learning, Go and do that. So many of these courses are now free or cheap, right? So focus on the things that you can control, which is your mindset. You have a growth mindset, not a fixed mindset. Focus on learning. Focus on preparing yourself for when the industry is going to come back. And as Ankush said, it is going to come back. The government is going to have to step in because the first thing that will recover is domestic tourism, not international tourism. Why? Very simple. Gov you, you cannot control how other governments are going to control their borders and their visas. The only thing that can be controlled is within India, you can probably have some freedom of travel very, very shortly. People are going to travel either by car, by train, and if they're going further than you know, eight or 10 hour journey, people will fly. Airlines have got so many aircraft parked. If they cannot fly overseas, they will deploy them locally. So there will be tourism. There will be travel. It's just not going to be to the same traditional places that we were all thinking of in the past. Okay? So keep your hopes up. But most importantly, hope is not a strategy. Please, under if you forget everything else anybody says today, please remember something. Hope is not a strategy. Okay? The only strategy you can put in place is getting yourself prepared. Now, I'm quite happy later, this is just an in introduction, but I'm quite happy later, I prepared a framework to help all of you students. I'm happy to go through it later, and if you want it, I will send it to Sachin. Sachin can actually email it out to all of you. And the framework is designed to help you think in a structured way about what is it you can do for yourself. What is, and, and using that framework, you need to follow it every single day. It's a discipline. It is not when I feel like it, I will do it. It is every single morning, get up, get dressed, get ready for work, okay? 
and then follow that framework so that you are in a frame of mind so that when the industry comes back, you are 100% ready. And whoever is not on this call, the I don't know how many of you are on the call, but whoever is not on this call is not going to have that framework. You guys are going to have that framework and you guys are going to be ready for when the industry bounces back. Thanks, Sachin. Thanks. Thanks, Vimal. So quite encouraging words for students, I guess. And uh, the framework, yeah, of course, I agree. Everybody can uh, follow that. And I'll await that for you from you and uh, we can pass it on to uh, the respective students. All right, so uh, coming on to the next question, uh, which is quite interesting uh, to know the past that this is not the first encounter with such cases of tourism industry. So I would like to move on to Dr. Sajnani first, if he can throw some light on this perspective also. Over to you, Dr. I can repeat your question. Uh, sorry, repeating again, uh, that this is not the first encounter of travel industry with such situation. Uh, I mean, there has been cases in the past uh, where such situations were there and, uh, you know, the, how, how about the recovery that times, you know, if we can correlate something. <clears throat> Sachin, it's a very interesting question. But, you know, uh, we are trying to compare uh, two or more than two things, you know, uh, where the magnitude is different. See, for example, if I look up to SARS, uh, SARS was restricted to a particular region, right? And uh, the impact was felt for maybe five months, six months, but the other uh, part of the world was open for the mobility. It was restricted primarily to one region. If we talk about 9-11, uh, uh, you know, where the twin towers were fell down uh, and, you know, and, but then uh, that was a very disastrous, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, thing which happened with the travel industry because uh, U.S. is the uh, prime tourist generating market for most of the part of the world. And that was felt for quite some time. And where we, we felt the, the decline in the tourist arrivals went up to good number, a few hundreds, maybe 500, 600 million people. And, uh, but then uh, we saw the economic uh, recession, the global economic recession in 2008, where the pocket was hit uh, badly. And, you know, for travel, you need... Uh, some disposable income, you need uh, discretionary income. And this uh, disposable income or discretionary income was in minus from each one of us. So that was again a period. But you know, all these things, uh, 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 the travel industry came back, bounced back and bounced back very strongly and in a very sustainable manner because uh, it was manageable. But as I said, you know, that uh, this pandemic is a, a tickling bomb. You know, it is not happening same time at the same places. Today, you know, we see that in India, we have got so many places which are uh, less than 1% of the effect of pandemic or globally also, we have got so many parts of the world where the pandemic is not that severe. But tomorrow, suppose what happens, they, we open up the borders of these uh, countries and mobility starts and we start experiencing that, you know, uh, the uh, stage one, stage two or stage three of this pandemic uh, happens. You know, it's a, it's a very serious situation for us. So we are not, but, but yes, I'm very positive that, you know, on the part of learnings, uh, the, the learning from this pandemic or this disaster or this crisis is going to be absolutely different. And it is going to give us a lesson, which I think this, this generation and the coming generation will never forget. We'll never forget because this learning is going to be a, a testing lesson for us. And uh, we'll remember, it will echo in our years for years, decades and centuries to come. You know, because uh, we have been uh, doing same things again and again in the past. Even when we revived, you know, I mentioned about SARS, I mentioned about 9-11, I mentioned about the economic uh, crisis of 2008. You know, how we revived? The strategies were same. But this time, our strategies are going to be different. Tools are going to be different. Because learning will be different. I think everybody will agree whether it's a, a participant from industry or participant from academia, you know, we are going to uh, handle the situation differently. And how long it is going to take? I mean, whatever reports I read, whether it is of KPMG, whether it is of P Chamber of Commerce, whether it is of uh, WTTC, UN WTO, you know, every statement gives. Now I'll give you one example. In China, when they opened, WTTC reported that in the first week of April, the hotel occupancy rate was X percent. And uh, in the uh, second week of April, it went up to 40 percent. Same is applicable for IATA report on uh, air, you know, air transport uh, need capacity. 
so you know it is it is very um, uh, uh, immature uh, prediction because we do not know uh, the future as of now but as ankush rightly said that you know give us some uh, we have to give us some time maybe 5 months 6 months to fully understand the situation and then draw a strategy to to you know to handle the situation or to move further or to charge it i think so, somebody is saying that my voice is not audible i think could you hear it yeah i can i can hear i can hear I think you sampada swain is saying that my voice was not audible That's i think fine. if it is uh, so that that is my uh, view on this uh, satin thank you thank you dr sajnani yeah thank so you so very very valid points coming in uh, i would like to move on to dr manjula choudhary now for her take on uh, this perspective over to you dr manjula yeah okay thank you sachin like uh, dr sajnani has given a frame of like what other calamities tourism or humanity has faced this is not the first encounter if we look at the future maybe after 50 years 30 years 100 years down the line we may have uh, worst situations but in the past whatever we have faced whether they have these have been viruses like sars or ebola or there have been financial crash crisis or there have been oil shocks depressions in the economy the impact has been uh, in such a manner that the growth of tourism has slowed down so its growth rate has declined so it was uh, decelerating but is still accelerating we can say this is how tourism was flourishing this is for the first time we are observing that tourism has been stopped dead in its track there is no tourism at all and even when tourism opens even then the tourists will be cautious governments will be cautious dr bagdi said that we can uh, move to areas where there there is no virus there is no such epidemic but the possibility of outsiders bringing epidemic is very common and possible because this is how we have got this epidemic because travel was open if we could have stopped it say one month back possibly we would we would have seen a lesser amount of infection and same thing ha- has happened across the world so of course this is very problematic but then the only thing is like even if this is the first time we are facing such a situation are we prepared like what is going to happen when we open up ankush has very rightly said that he doesn't see that it happening in 2021 correct but in 2021 we cannot have the same form of tourism maybe we will travel with a lot of precautions everybody carrying these sanitizers wearing masks and uh, taking all the precautions making the social distancing it means that tourism has to be opened such a ma- such a manner the destinations are not crowded trains are not crowded and we see in india the number of population is so huge that opening domestic tourism might create problem immediately though it may seem so seems is so for option but it may not be so safe so maybe we have to curtail cert- certain things like number of tourists that visit at a destination so that we can maintain the distancing and we are protected from such a infections or diseases but of course the preparedness is the key the more prepared we are the better we will be able to move into the future i am not sure like how the industry is doing in this on this count everybody every businessman will be making a strategy because i was talking to someone on yesterday they they are doing virtual tours with the help of ministry of tourism they are also doing a webinar every day at least during this time we all can stay prepared tourists can take a virtual tours of the wish list and here industry can play a very important role they can provide the virtual tours and they, they, then we can have our wish list at 10 top destinations i want to visit in the t- next 10 years at least i have a second hand feel of those uh, travels through the virtual travel we academicians can stay prepared we were thrown into this online teaching all of a sudden with the one one directive of the government and now i think uh, all of us have become fairly adapted to us we have started uh, taking platform and using the platform industry is also preparing students are also prepared i am seeing a good number of students have joined here so far so good but then we have to prepare a lot if we have to overcome it and move into the future and as i said earlier a concerted effort is required individual individual efforts among, with the different verticals are are not going to matter or will not work in the long run thank you thank you thank you dr manjula so taking a bit a point from uh, your conversation uh, yesterday we did one session with hoteliers so as you said that world will be changing the 
uh, you know travel behavior of people will change the same way hoteliers are also planning so someone quoted that uh, in the coming days post covid uh, we might include uh, small sanitizers and masks in the room accessories and uh, even uh, instead of uh, welcome with the garland it would be with the, with the mask for every guest so nice takeaways from that sessions also all right so, so move yeah. um just very quickly on that, you know, uh, just this morning or was it last night? I can't remember. I, I did a, a LinkedIn post about, you know, there's a company that I work with that, that did a, the new customer journey, the sanitized customer journey, right? They talk about 70, seven zero uh, touch points, not, well, not one seven, seven zero touch points in your customer journey. Of course, this was looking purely at aviation, not at railways or crews or anything. 70 different touch points on how the new customer journey is going to be sanitized. So if we talk about a new world tomorrow, this is probably, you know, if you look at it in the immediate short term, this is one of the first things you have to understand. Whether you're a student or a practitioner or anybody, right? Your, your immediate travel journey is now going to be very much focused around hygiene, safety and sanitization. Uh, if you are interested, go and look at that post. If somebody wants that, I can always forward you the infographic. That's really interesting to see. It might give you some ideas as to where you can maybe uh, help. Sure, Vimal. Would be great if you can share that. So we can also share it to mass audience to uh, consider that. Okay. So uh, moving on to next, Professor uh, Dr. Bagri for his uh, views on this subject. Over to you, Dr. Okay. Bagri. Thank you. Uh, let us see. The first point that Professor Saljani raised that this problem that we are facing, I mean, today is something very different than the problems that we faced right from Babri Masjid demolition when there was no tourist in the country. But the, I mean, crises are two types. One is a regional crisis, one is a national crisis. As Professor Manjula rightly pointed out, there were so many other crises he pointed out. Regional crisis, like, like in 2013, there was a Kedarnath tragedy. There were no tourists in Kedarnath in 2013 and even in the beginning of 2014. But if you see the graph of 2014 September, it was immediately hiked to 10 lakh, not 10 lakh, 5 lakh. The same thing that I'm telling you, there are 1800 million domestic tourists in this country. Our India's population is at 1240 million. Our domestic tourists are 1800 million. And foreign tourists that we are talking about, we are bothering about them, they are only 10 million, 10 million. And the paying capacity of domestic tourists is almost at par of foreign tourists. If you see the tariff, again, I am repeating the same thing that absolutely Professor Manjula is telling that how the tourist will be allowed from Uttarakhand to Himachal or Himachal or Delhi to Himachal definitely sees absolutely right. But as I told you, there is an intra-regional tourist. Definitely, in Kamakya, where I was last month, I was in Kamakya, the crowd that I faced over there, around 10,000 in the morning, and I told them from where they are, they are said that we are Shibshagar, we are from Dibrugat, we are from Tejpur, we are from Meghalaya. Let us, let us explore possibilities to deploy the students of Guwahati University, Shilong University, Tejpur University, in the surrounding of Kamakya, and the resorts and there and as Bimal pointed out they should they should have hands on the skill because after four months when they will join the trade do you know excel no sir i don't know do you know these things no sir i, I was just sleeping what they are what they were doing so Bimal was rightly pointed out hands on the skill must be there they should make them extraordinary and after that they should not bother for the salary they should go some i mean living cost and simultaneously, they should go to hand, hands-on training. And the state government of Uttarakhand, Himachal, Ladakh, especially Ladakh, they should do something that the movement of tourists can go there from those areas which are not affected. I'm sure that by this way, we can go ahead in this crisis. And by the, I mean, October and November, all things will be normal and we will be flying from one point to other points and we will be very grateful to the Almighty that they have given us the strength to guide our students for their better future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. and Professor Bagri. Uh, as you rightly pointed that it's the right time to upgrade 
maybe learning new things, new softwares which are useful uh, in industrial usage. So this is not only for students. Uh, I'll just tell you that I'm uh, doing these uh, meetings with various industry sectors since uh, three weeks now, since the uh, lockdown started. So the, the same message industry players are giving to their employees as well, that this is the break to upgrade. So it's a learning stage, not only for students, but all, all for the players as well. And for the uh, students point of view, it's uh, very much required. So very well said. And uh, having said that, uh, I think this question is almost covered. I would like to take some industrial comments uh, from Ankush and uh, on the silver lining. What is the silver lining, Ankush, you see for the tourism students or the freshers or young blood? Over to you if you can comment on that. Sorry, I need to unmute. Wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I said, uh, I, I was saying that great minds right now are at work. I can tell you one thing, this has been a blessing. You know, you don't get 32 days sitting like this and thinking about a lot of things which you wanted to do and some great ideas which come to you. I think there are a great bunch of people I can see on my screen who might crack an idea which might be probably the biggest startup going forward in the travel space. Plus, I mean, I see this as a threat as well because there is some young guy thinking about something which can really, really kind of evolve and become very different than what we or my other colleagues have been doing. Uh, I mean, great companies which have been built over the last many years. I think it's a great time to think too. Um, as, as Dr. Bagri said, I think um, learning is something which is super. I mean, I'm reading things which I've never read because of timing issues. Today, I think I have that time to, the me time, as I say, to make me as a better individual, being in the business for 20 years, I think all of us can learn uh, during these times. So I think it's a great opportunity for enhance your learning. You know, there are great webinars. There are great sessions of the travel industry. I mean, if you are happy, I can share about 110 courses, which we have, Virtual Academy, which we have in, on, on our site, which I can expose to the students there. They can go through these courses, their destination management courses um, within India, as well as overseas. Um, so I think overall yourself, look at yourself, see your weaknesses. And, you know, you will be, a, I think everybody will be better people when it comes to their businesses, even as humans during this uh, lockdown uh, time. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ankush. So for this uh, valuable inputs. Now moving on to Vimal. Vimal, uh, if you can uh, share something on that silver lining uh, aspect. Yeah, hi. Um, very happy to do this. So as I was saying earlier, you know, this is a time for you to, uh, I think you used the word such in the break to upgrade. And, you know, we, we talked earlier about how this is a time for you to get prepared for when the business comes back. Don't sit back and, and wring your hands and worry, right? And so how, how do you do that? So, you know, be, before I tell you about my framework later, the first thing you need to understand is there is going to be an immediate impact. There is going to be a medium impact and there's going to be a much longer term impact. Just like post 9-11, when everything was shut down, you had to take off, you basically had to go Nanga through security. And finally, everything came back to a point now where you only have to take off your shoes and remove all. So there's going to be an immediate medium term and long term. In the immediate term, you know, everybody is going to be concerned about hygiene, safety and sanitation, right? Hotels, airlines, there's going to be laws and regulations around it. There is going to be immediately lower demand for a lot of things, right? There's going to be a, a lower demand, for example, and a desire for physical interactions. So people won't want to touch things so much. If you're giving them a menu, maybe they don't want to touch it. Right. So what is the digital interface that can be brought in instead of a physical menu, for example? These are some ideas that you need to be thinking about. Customer service. You don't know whether I'm smiling right now, right? If I wear a mask tomorrow, can you hear me? If I wear a mask tomorrow and I put it behind the mask, do you know whether I'm smiling? So how, you, how do you design customer service behind the mask? Any of you thinking of going into customer experience and customer service need to think about this, right? Uh, Ankush was talking about, you know, uh, disruptive technologies or startups. One of the biggest problems in travel today, which everybody, including I'm sure Ankush struggles with, is how do you acquire customers? Customer acquisition is a huge cost. You got to pay for advertising. You got to steal customers from your competitors. You got to give them discounts. You got to, you got to do 110 things, right? It costs you 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars to get a customer into your, your funnel. 
digital is going to offer you to do that. Now, why am I talking about digital in the space of short, medium, long term? If people don't want to touch you, if people don't want to meet you, if you cannot attend conferences, if people are turning off from advertising, how are, they, how are you going to acquire them as a business? These are all problems that you guys as students can definitely think about and solve tomorrow, right? Um, you, are the, you are digital natives. People like myself are not digital natives. I was born in 72, right? I'm a digital nomad. I, I was non-digital and I became digital. You guys are digital natives. Use that advantage that you have. Uh, use that to your advantage, right? When, when, when the industry is coming back. The last thing that I want to say is, you know, consider this. For every business that's coming out of this uh, period, every travel business, Cost is going to be a major, major issue. Why? Not because cost is cost, but because revenues are going to be lower. So you know that PNL is basically revenue minus cost. If your revenue comes down here, what has to happen to your cost? It cannot stay here. It has to come down. Right? So think about, you know, these three, four things that I've told you right now, digital, cost, customer service. Think, you know, Expand your horizons to think beyond the norm and beyond the box that you're thinking. How do I get a job? Where do I get a job? These are all normal things. Think about your, the impact of your ideas. Don't think about who is going to hire me. Think about why is somebody going to hire me? What's in it for them to hire me? What difference do I bring to the table? So if you ask me whether there's a silver lining, oh my God, yes. There is a huge silver lining to, the, to, to, to this whole situation. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, Mumal. So uh, when uh, we started this session, we were, we were in planning phase. I was in touch with Dr. Sajnani. So he specifically mentioned this question to me about the silver lining. So over to you, Dr. Sajnani, if you want to say something on this. Thank you, uh, Sachin. I think uh, so. I've spoken much about silver lining, but this is the right time for students, you know, for both. Uh, a student and for the academicians, for the institution, for all, you know, much has been said by Rimmel, by Ankush, that there is so much to do now. See, we know domestic tourism is going to come up. But where? You know, which are those areas? Northeast was not uh, very popular among domestic tourists. Bhagdi sir said there are approximately 12-40 million domestic tourists. But if we look at the movement of these 12-40 million people, it was primarily to those 10 places which are affected, worst affected with the pandemic today. So now where will this domestic tourism move? So their mobility is to be redirected. New places. Now who will design the new products? The industry is busy. A player like Ankush will be busy in, uh, you know, uh, in talking, talking out strategies. You know, how to uh, handle the government regulations. How to uh, ask government to give us more concessions. So, you know, cash flow moves on. You know, we all know that 70% of our labor, our workforce in tourism works with uh, SMEs or MSMEs. Now, these MSMEs are out of cash. They need cash. So they'll be running after the government to, you know, to maintain the cash flow in the form of certain concessions, relaxations. Government is doing much for that. So one thing is there, jobs are going to be there. There will be no job loss as for the government uh, plans in place. Now, you know, when I say domestic, international also. I mean, uh, I'm very optimistic because uh, I'm in the uh, uh, teaching for last good 25, 27 years. I know the industry is, is eager. I industry has the hunger for business. And this time, the quality of business is going to be different. The business is going to be a new place, new normal business practice. I mean, they are going to work with, like Wimmel said, hygiene, cleanliness, uh, you know, responsible. So we have to tell every student, we have to tell every uh, you know, uh, person in the, in the academia that we have to train students with an ethical code of conduct. See, we have UNWTO's ethical code of conduct, but we have never you know, uh, practiced it. We have never taught it. We have never uh, implemented it. But this is the time when every institution, every academia has to think about this. Oh, why we are forgetting, you know? that China inbound tourism, we have got massive inbound tourism in China. Why can't we leverage it? Our cultural affinity, you know, we are same as China, but every student has the time now to compare what this dragon can offer, I cannot offer as the Indian tourism market. So let's come up with some good practices and offer, rightly said by Vimal, 
you know it is not important who is going to hire me why one should hire me tomorrow ankush you know will ask you know why should i hire you you are going to be a liability otherwise so i should tell them look i have worked out these 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 few product designs on mice now weddings you know uh, gone are the days of at least for next one whole year that all weddings will happen in india why are we forgetting it you know those the uh, uh, the destination weddings happening in thailand hong kong macau malaysia singapore is going to happen here all meetings are going to happen here and uh, you know uh, new products like yoga bagdi sir said wellness ayurveda agro you know new two tourism products have to be designed who will design them our students because rightly said uh, they are uh, tech savvy they are born with the digital advantage and they can you know come up with 3d models technology driven so i know i always talk about uh, 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 the age of uh, you know uh, uh, artificial intelligence i mean i always talk about the age of uh, 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 machine learning data science i mean data uh, ankush may have data of say 100000 people but then you know how this data is being used to draw conclusions over the i mean how they have changed uh, their behavior so a student can come forward with a model uh, with the algorithm and they can design that uh, analytic and they can forward it to ankush and ankush will say oh yeah he is a he is a dynamic chap he can bring value to me on the table but we will have to create value for ourselves and this value student can you know learn now uh, manjula madam said uh, so many courses online are offered i mean i am doing at least two courses a day i mean and they are such lovely courses i mean uh, bringing so much of learning and uh, students need to actually come out of that uh, shield the shield of oh i have to do conventional things no they have to think out of the box and they have to think new to you know to be the fittest in the industry jobs will not be a problem for anyone be it from tourism be it from hospitality be it from mice be it from aviation but then will not be a problem i mean uh, companies will really uh, run after you you will be sought after if you have your your own usp you have to develop that usp for your and that's my uh, take on that thank sure. you thank you thank you sir uh, so the time is to develop your own usp usp yeah i like that point so considering the time i'll just move on to the last question and uh, will limit it to 2 uh, minutes per speaker if you can follow that would be great uh, that would be industry ask from freshers post c19 so how industry uh, you know expectations would rise uh, from hiring uh, freshers into the trade so first uh, we'll take the you know uh, perspective of uh, dr manjula choudhury what is your take on the same over to you dr manjula Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you, Sachin. Like uh, Dr. Sajinani has rightly said, that jobs will not be a problem if you are skilled enough. The industry will be waiting for you. But my advice to all the students is: please do not have a narrow perspective of life that you only want job that to in tourism industry. Like the whole purpose of education is learning to be. Always remember UNESCO document of 1973. So learning should to be should be your purpose of life, and job is just one dimension of it. and as far as the future is concerned you will have a different perspective and different dimensions like it has been discussed ai will play important role there will be ml there will be iot i see a lot of consolidation happening along predictive analytics and technology and this is for the information of the students that these are the best times as far as education is concerned for example we have launched a course where we have tied up with the industry and we are doing online teaching only after that they will go for practice that is also possible online then they straight away go to the industry we don't charge any fees this is just on the experimental basis we have launched we will charge the fees once we once they take the job so this is for the computer science graduates as of now once this model is successful we may maybe we can extend this model for others also so a lot of opportunities will be coming please stay prepared be aware keep learning and then uh, the, the the world will be yours so you are young and you have a lot of opportunities in front of you thank you sure thank you thank you ma'am want to take a quick bite from uh, professor bagri on the same okay <coughs> i am fully agree with professor manjula and professor sajnani 
But my point is that as regards to what is the perception of the employer from these freshers that are passing out, you see, I'm telling practically, most of my students who have been placed in the trade, they were asked to sell the package. And very few of them were successful in selling the packages. And quite a few of them were asked to resign from the trade. Now, on the one side, they should ask to hands, get some hands-on training, but they should know how to talk to a consumer, how to know the psychology of custom, customer, how to find out a niche market, and how to interact with the customers so that a package can be sold out. I'm I, again agreed with Mr. Bimal that in this scenario, the students try to get maximum knowledge of skills development, even that they should know what are the, I mean, how politely a fresher should talk to the customer because you know, customer is a king and there are thousands of travel agents. Therefore, the first priority is to revive, to make the personality in such a way that can be once deployed in the trade, can perform to the best of the satisfaction of the employer. We have so many students, even they do not know how to write a letter to a customer confirming the booking and how to convince him about the tourist attraction. Most of the students are no theories. They know Maslow theory, needs and wants. They know the definition, but they don't know the psychology of the customer. Therefore, as all I'm a respected professor here, they have so many bright students, they could not cope up with the trade as they finally switched over to academics. With these few words, I must say that, first thing that students who know destination interpretation and visitor psychology and all the modern technology that are required to interact with the customer is the need of the hour. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank Professor. You. Uh, it would be interesting to know the industry perspective. How are uh, they planning? What would be their expectations from, as far as hiring professors is concerned, post COVID? So it would, uh, would be can interesting to- point? Can I add one point? Sir, please, please. See, I, uh, I just jotted down one point, you know. In the uh, coming days, post COVID, student, will have to develop skills on market research. Market research tools, you know, they must uh, learn in these days. They may uh, undergo some online courses on market research tools because every company would like to study the changing buying and consuming process, the, the behavior of the changing world. New, new tourists, you know, they would like to study that before they offer any product. So that will be a, a very important aspect for any uh, newcomer to join the industry. I wanted to add that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So it uh, would be interesting to take, uh, you know, views of Ankush on this. What would be your expectations, uh, you know, post COVID uh, about uh, hiring professors and all? Over to you. So Sachin, as an employer, and I think all of us would probably have the same uh, opinion, I mean, the same points for hiring a student. I think data and analytics and MIS, you know, I know it's a very broad, term but the reality is today data is king and if you can actually manipulate and stimulate your data you know it can have, definitely help a company to monetize more revenues for themselves i think niche now the tourism has opened up so much that if you're a champion of one particular product i think that's a big opportunity which an employer will look for example i'm just saying the easiest example if you're a champion of pilgrimage if you're a champion of river rafting in rishikesh that brings a niche. You're the destination specialist. I mean, nobody can challenge you in Australia, for example, if it's an outbound thing. I think this is something which a employer will really value. Second is digital marketing will play a very important role because I think uh, India being such a tech savvy country, I think the way we use our phones today and screen time is something which everybody is so used to, you know, uh, looking and uh, be it social, uh, be it Instagram, be it Facebook, be it some other sites. I think that's something which one can definitely master it in the tourism space as a digital marketer. I think the most important for me is aptitude and energy. You know, when your guy actually walks in an interview, within two minutes, you can actually decide which way this guy is going to go. You know, the way he sits on the table, the way he brings that energy, I think it's very, very important. It's not key going like this, Hanji, sir, I'm coming, you know, I you I need a job. I think it doesn't work. And nothing can compromise in sincerity. Whoever it might be, I think sincerity is something which an employer will really value. So my urge to, and I think this is something which lacks in the millennials today. I think, you know, I think, 
my seniors, teachers who are here will have seen this difference in the last 20 years of sincerity when it comes to students towards their life and their work. I think my humble request is everybody should be very sincere what you do. I mean, there is no compromise. There's no substitute to that. Yeah, that's it. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Ankush. I think very, very valid points we used to hear long back. So it's a refresher to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So would like to take uh, comments from Vimal on the same. Vimal, I think you have uh, something to share on that as well. I wanted to share my screen, but it's uh, disabled apparently. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Let me check. No problem. I want, what I wanted to do was actually, while, while Sachin is checking, I wanted to share my, my framework that I promised. Um, I worked on it. Uh, I, I didn't take too long, honestly, but uh, I worked on it since yesterday and I wanted to share it with you. Um, so while, while he's checking on that, let me just go through it with you. Um, Sachin, interrupt me and tell me when it's ready, then I can share it. So basically, I've got a four grid, uh, four grid kind of a framework, right? Where I've got employers, yourself, the trends and the industry. So if you, if you consider yourself as the nerve center and have a daily diligence and a discipline of focusing on these four areas of your life, uh, it'll give you a kind of a framework as to what you should be doing every day while you're waiting for a, or looking for a job or waiting to, you know, if you've got some free time, which we all do a lot more now, how can you work uh, on, on your life to get prepared for post-COVID-19, right? So let's, let's deal with each category on its own. If you look at employers, you know, what you should be doing, the five basic things you should be doing are target who you want to work for. Don't, don't just spray and pray, right? Research the targets and the business models. So let's say you want to work for Ankush's company. Research his company, research the business models, research where, you know, do a SWOT analysis. That's the third thing. Prepare a folder, you know, impress the hell out of him when you go and talk to him, not just with your energy and your seriousness and your sincerity, but with your understanding of his business. Tell him, suggest to him. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. sorry, sorry. I just... Kind of, you know, do a SWOT and prepare a folder, right? Um, connect with him, connect with people in his company. Start conversations. Don't just say, sir, I want a job. Here's my CV. Don't do that. That's really irritating for everybody, right? Uh, and then follow the major events in the industry and share those events with Ankush or with people in his company that you're connecting to. Sorry, Ankush, I'm just taking the liberty of just using you as the example. But, but, uh, but I'm just trying to make it real life for each one of the students here, right? So under employer, think of all these five actions that I told you about. Now, start with yourself, okay? Have mental, you know, focus on your mental health, be positive, have, have a growth mindset as opposed to a to a fixed mindset. And I'll send you these things about what the difference is later. Okay. Focus on your physical health, exercise, do 30 minutes every day, at least plan your time, do an agenda for the day. And most importantly, when you wake up in the morning, hello, dress for success. I can also wear a singlet and sit here. No, but I'm wearing a shirt. You are sitting at home, dress comfortably, but dress for success. Why? Because it impacts your mentality. It gets you ready for the day. So this is yourself. Now, think about the industry, the travel industry. As I told you before, people will travel again. There will be pockets of opportunity, but you must think about where these opportunities are going to be. You've got so many clues from today's webinar. Domestic opportunities, niche opportunities like yoga, wellness. Um, uh, somebody mentioned uh, uh, pilgrimage travel. I think, Ankush, you mentioned it, right? There are all these niche opportunities. Go in figure out if this is something that resonates with you personally and maybe you know something that other people don't. Maybe you are really good at yoga. Maybe you can start up something, right? Um, a lot of people, by the way, have given me private messages in the chat asking me questions. Look, figure out what is your differentiation? What is your specialization? Something different that you can bring to the table that nobody else can, right? Um, and last but not least, please understand something. Don't regurgitate news and regurgitate graphs and regurgitate generalizations. Nobody wants that. Everybody here knows what the news is, what the generalizations are. What is going to differentiate you are your ideas and the impact of your ideas. That is what everybody, every employer is looking for. If you ask Ankush, you ask uh, Prof Manjula, you ask anybody, everybody is talking about impact of your ideas. AI for AI's sake, IoT for IoT's sake is useless. How is it going to help the business? How is data science going to help the business? This is what you must be thinking. Think three steps down. Don't think the same as everybody else. Last but not least, 
be aware of the trends in the industry. So as you can see, my background here is about social media. Why? Because this is something that very, very few people seem to understand. Look, I know everybody here is on Facebook and Instagram. <coughs> what I'm talking about. I'm talking about using social media for business. This is a trend that has blown up in other countries in the Western world, but it's not there in India. It's going to help you brand yourself, brand your business, acquire customers. It can help you do so many things. But beyond just social media, think about these two things. In a world in three months or six months from now, where people don't meet each other, where you cannot travel to meet your customer, where you are not able to conduct meetings, where your interviews are going to be conducted on Skype, on WhatsApp, video or whatever, how are you going to build trust? How are you going to build relationships? If you cannot shake hands, you cannot jappi, you cannot puppy, you cannot do all these things. How are you going to build relationships and trust? These are things that you need to be thinking about. This is why you need to start building new digital skills, not the same old digital skills from last month or last week. Right? So these are kind of the things. Again, I'll just recap the four areas. Think about yourself. Think about what employers want and what you can do. Think about the industry and think about the four big trends. Okay, I'll be happy to share this framework with you. I will email it to Sachin and he can send it out to you guys. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Vimal. Uh, you can check the screen share if you want. Still needed. Yeah, so, okay, I'll, I'll just do it now quickly and I'll show you guys. Sorry, it still says disabled. Okay. I'll, I'll email Maybe, you yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. No issues. Yeah. All right. So, uh, I, I mean, uh, thank you so much for these valuable inputs as well. Uh, and uh, more or less questions are covered, but still we have some questions coming in. And uh, one question is there for Ankush, which many have raised. I don't know it's right to raise it right now at this platform or not, but I'm sure Ankush can handle this. So just giving it to you is... Uh, you know, people are asking uh, about the retrenchment industry is doing. It's giving very insecure vibes. There are a lot of messages that, that the retrenchment is going on. So if you can, you know, uh, comment on the same would be helpful for everyone. Let me unmute you. Wait, wait. It's not done. So, yeah. So I'll be very, very transparent and straightforward. Um, such in the short term change is there. I think retrenchment is something which is unfortunately um, not that anybody want wishes to do, but uh, because of there's no revenue, there is no cash flow happening. And I don't see it happening even in the month of May and June. I think in Diwali, the times are going to be tough. Uh, I think within one year, things will start looking back. So I can assure you one thing, the, the way retrenchment happened, the way the hiring will start happening back. So I think it's a very short term problem. And let's be honest, it's not only our industry. It is everywhere right now. Pick up any industry where this challenge is not happening. Okay. Yes, we have been, uh, as travel industry, we have been, uh, you know, probably the most severely impacted, but I think it's a very short term challenge. So that's not something one should get demotivated. Um, you know, by, I think, I think by Q2, um, the first April next year, I think things will really, really pick up. And everybody who had got laid off or had to go unpaid leaves, will be asked to come back or, and I think there'll be some real good talent available in the market and young talent is something I think is always welcome because as um, Sachin said, uh, I'm sorry, as Wimble said at 72, I am 77, you know, uh, you need young minds to think differently, which probably me and Wimble and cannot uh, emphasize, you know, things the way probably the young 20, 22 year old today can. So there's no dearth of opportunities, just a short term problem. And I think all of us have to live with it right now. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Ankush. So open this for last comment from all gurus from Educational Institute as well. Any last comment you want to give on more than welcome. S start with Dr. Sajnani first. Uh, Sachin, I think uh, much has been spoken and much has been learned by the attendees of the audience for the session today. But you know, one thing is for sure that we have to work with positive mind. All the time, we have to be very positive. And I believe that, you know, when I think positive, positive, positive chemical reactions take place in my body. When positive, positive chemicals happen within my body, a positive uh, surrounding happens around me. Everybody goes positive, you know. So that's why when you mentioned the topic to me, uh, I'm, I'm declining all webinars because of one reason, because we're talking all negative. But when you gave me the topic, silver lining, it was very positive, so I accepted it. And I said, when I saw the panel also, 
all positive people my gurus so i thought no i should accept it but then you know every uh, uh, we we must remember that every night has a day after every you know uh, it, we have learned all through our ages that uh, you know every bad phase is followed with a very good phase and how uh, long it is going to last no one knows but if we are positive we will get over it happily that's uh, my view on that thank you oh, thank you so last take from uh, dr manjula as well we yeah, unmute you yeah thank you sachin dr sajinani has rightly said that there said that there is a silver lining and good times will come but there is a piece of advice for students like somebody asked about retrenchment studies have indicated in india that people have very poor knowledge of general financial planning so it's very important for all that will be entering into industry after 6 months or a year that they shall learn something about financial planning during this period because such times may come and this is not happening in india this is happening across the world where employees are being sent on furlough if there is no retrenchment directly so prepare for financial planning make sure you have enough resources to sustain yourself at least for 3 months by the time situation recovers and in fact these are the tough times which give us a lot of uh, opportunities and as well as ideas what we can do to our life as ankush said that he has been able to think a lot it applies to all of us and to young students also please think think about it what do you want in life and prepare yourself learn about the financial planning there are so many courses available these days and uh, i hope that things will go well and my wishes are with all of you have have a very good future in the industry thank you thank you thank you ma'am these wonderful words i think uh, for students it would be i would uh, term it as another semester which is added to their course so consider this as an, another uh, set of uh, you know month of education which you can grasp so last comment from professor bagri bagri also would like to take over to you sir uh, thank you after having this long deliberation in a i have just concluded in in my from my side there are three aspects are very important one thing if a student is a master of de in destination he should try to get hands on knowledge in financial management and if a student are having the background of in financial management he should get hands on knowledge on destination management second thing if the student is master in both the things and there is no job at all then what should he do he should write a story on a destination as someone rightly pointed out if i send my bi data that i want a job it is a very humiliating for the i mean employer why he is writing for this one he should instead of sending his application for job he should that i discover this new destination i discover this new location and the travel agent will be happy to interact with him that tell us something more and by this way if the the student has got hands on knowledge on both theory and practice and developed his skills and send a story of a destination definitely there is a opportunity of job but if the student is just following following so that is not going to solve the problem third thing that in this 3 or 4 months if someone is in home he should try his best to 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 lead in somewhere i received so many research paper you know from beijing university china the student of final year is the reviewer of a journal and the way the author the student has written a research paper i can say that is very rightly written by applying all methodology but if i ask the same thing to one of my students he won't be in a position to write a research paper of that standard why because the student of china are being compelled not to clear they cannot clear the examination until their dissertation has a paper of such standard got published in scopus journal like that so these things are i mean we have four months of time let some students to do this practice who are of academic interest we cannot compel them to go to trade and if they are good they should fight for ugc net examination but those who are i mean interested in the trade they should explore new destination they have a topic to write a dissertation they should write some suggestions and they can submit to the government of india to the travel agent and then they they can be invited to have a better job in the trade thank you so oh, thank you thank you sir uh, any last comment from vimal or ankush so that we can conclude the session wait a minute okay. i think we... hi am i on yeah, yeah you are on yeah 
Um, just a couple of things, um, which which I, I'm not going to repeat what everybody else has said or what I have said, but two very practical things you need to take away right now. Okay. Are you on LinkedIn? If you're not on LinkedIn, go and get on LinkedIn. Okay. India is one of the largest users of LinkedIn. Companies around the world, senior executives use LinkedIn. Tomorrow when you apply for a job, I will let Ankush answer this, but I'm pretty sure if you ever come to me for a job, the first thing I will do is go on Google. Second thing I will go is on LinkedIn. Alternatively, if I'm already on LinkedIn, the first thing I will do is go on LinkedIn. And the second thing I will do is go on Google and I will Google you. And I will see what social profiles you have. If you are invisible on social, if you have done nothing in social, I will not trust you. I will probably have a negative opinion when I start talking to you because I will ask myself, what do you have to hide? So for all of you in the chat who are asking me or asking everybody, what causes, what causes, what causes, there are only two answers. The first course you should do is whatever you are weak in. The second course you should do is go and learn how to project your personal brand on social media. And if you're, and everybody else who is asking me what practical experience can I get without a job? Boss, this is not the first question. When I was looking for a job 20 years ago, I also didn't have practical experience. The practical experience that you can do in this kind of environment is think about the ideas that are going to promote tourism, travel, write about them, blog about them, put them on your LinkedIn profile. Because then when, when Ankush interviews you for a job, or when somebody interviews you for a job, they're going to go on your LinkedIn profile. They're going to read what you wrote and they're going to say, this guy or this girl has got brains. They are thinking. They are thinking of what they can do to help the industry recover, right? This is the way that you differentiate yourself from the 100 million other people who are using LinkedIn or the other thousands of people who are not on LinkedIn. So this is just one very practical tip for you to take away. Thank you very much for listening. Connect with me here. Take a photograph of that. You can connect with me. If you need any help, reach out to me. It's free. Thank you, Vimal. But you stole my last line. Every matter you have stolen. So I have nothing. So last comment from Ankush, then we can conclude. I think um, uh, Sachin Vimal summarized it very well. So I don't think I need to add anything else. The only thing I can say, this shall pass soon. You know, don't get demotivated. You know, just stand by, watch the game for the next six months. And I can promise you 2021 will be a brighter year for everybody. It's not only us. It's not anybody, I think. So just be calm and just get yourself trained more, I think, over the next few months. And you'll be ready to roar in 2021. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ankush. Uh, so from all of this, there's one advice from my side also to the students that we have invited all the speakers here. So you know everybody's name. In the invitation, you got their names and company and uh, you know the institutes they are coming from. Follow them also on social media or LinkedIn or Facebook, their pages, their company pages. So you, you keep on getting some, some key information they are doing. So this will also add on to your uh, you know knowledge base. So this is all from my side and uh, thank you everyone, all the panelists who have taken out time on Saturday and uh, attended this session. And to all students also who are concerned and I hope uh, we were able to solve some of their queries and uh, look forward to see you in somewhere soon in the near time. Till then, take care, stay safe, stay home. And see you soon on the roads, Varys. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.